When we added MDMA, what will you do? Went up to 61%. Oh, uh, hell yes. But I saw a bird that morning. You made the first blue in 200 years. This may be TMI for you, but I'm a full disclosure sort of woman. My last STI check was in September, and I'm happy to report that I was negative for chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis, and the four H's, which are HIV, HPV, HSV2, and Hep C. Yay, I got through that. <laughs> My turn-ons range from the pleasantly mundane to the somewhat risque. There's nothing that gets my juices flowing than like a deep conversation, eye-gazing, and lingering kisses. And if we're going to go further into the sexual realm, then I enjoy playing with sensations. I like soft touch, caresses, and nibbling, to scratching, biting, and even some hair pulling. Which brings me to my avoids. I may like a little cayenne mixed in with my vanilla, but I am not a Fifty Shades of Grey sort of woman. I do not enjoy pain for the sake of suffering. I'm also pretty sensitive to noises, so loud music, crying children, or that nasally voice of the BBC broadcaster could bring me to a total halt. My relationship intentions with you are to have an authentic connection with people who want to change the world. In partners, I look for those that work on their spiritual and personal growth and have a playful sexuality. I don't have expectations on this. It could be platonic, romantic, or even just sexual. My safer sex etiquette is to never mix sex with alcohol because it makes consent difficult to ascertain. I use condoms with all my new partners until our relationship has been established, and I don't worry about pregnancy since I've had a tubal. But someday, I think it might be nice to hold a little grandbaby. <sighs> God, it was not always that easy to do that talk, especially in front of hundreds of people. Seven years ago, I became Dr. Taco Tuesday. As a family practice doc and women's health care specialist, I dedicate my Tuesdays to doing my female pelvic and breast exams. One day, as I was finishing up, I was thinking about what to make for dinner, and Taco Tuesday popped up in my head, and I found a funny name for my weekly Well Woman Exam Day. On Taco Tuesday, I ask my patients about their sexual history. The stigma around sexuality permeates everything, even healthcare. So my patients are often uncomfortable and even a little bit surprised. But when asked in a non-judgmental manner, they started opening up. They had a lot of questions. They wanted to know what was normal, what there is to be concerned about, and what they could do better. All these questions led me to create an open forum on Facebook that I named Taco Tuesday, which led me to an ongoing journey of normalizing sexual stigmas. As you'll find out, helping people have a healthy relationship with their sexuality has become my passion. Sex is a fundamental life energy. We are created through it, we are pleasured through it, and yet we are so ashamed of its power. Talking about sex is talking about being alive. Through my work as a physician, I discovered the massive problem our sex-negative culture has created and my unique position to make a positive impact. We must learn to talk more frankly about sex, because that is a solution to reducing our shame. Last summer, I created an online survey where over a thousand people answered to gather information about our relationship with sexuality. I asked questions such as the roots of our shame, our safer sex practices, and whether or not we could disclose our desires and boundaries to our partners. I learned that a lot of people want to have these conversations, but don't know where or how to start. We're scared of hurting our partners or feeling of rejection, and it makes it difficult to have honest and authentic conversations. 
Knowing your boundaries, desires, and intentions is part of having a healthy sexuality. Understanding your needs for sexual and emotional wellness and expressing this to your partner helps create better sex and conversations throughout your relationship. I'm humbled by how many people are reluctant to talk to each other about sex. We're scared of being told we're being too forward or we're called promiscuous or labeled a slut. So instead, we hide behind social lubricants such as alcohol or create this facade of who we are through texting and social media. This has helped contribute to the toxicity that exists between men and women and the fear and mistrust we have of one another. Brock Turner happened. He is that Stanford swimmer who was convicted of assaulting an unconscious woman. When I read her statement she wrote after his sentencing, I knew that something had to change. She wrote, he asked if I wanted to dance. Apparently, I said yes. He asked if I wanted to go to his dorm room. I said yes. He asked if he could finger me. Apparently, I granted full permission. He is the one in the clear. In his story, all he needed was three words, yes, yes, and yes, before he had me half naked on the ground. For future reference, if you want to know whether a girl could consent, make sure she could speak an entire sentence. <laughs> My kids were about to go to college. College is supposed to be fun and free, and I know that alcohol and sex go hand in hand. And I didn't want my son to be a Brock Turner, and I didn't want my daughter to be found half naked with pine needles in her hair. There has to be some cultural shift that allows us to have these conversations about sex before we get naked or intoxicated. Some formula that allows us to reduce the stigma and shame so inherent in our seduction dance. I searched for the special salsa that would make everybody's taco experience hot and spicy. <laughs> and I came up with a mnemonic to help me, us all have these meaningful conversations. You might not know this about doctors, but we need mnemonics to remember everything. <laughs> Stars. S-T-A-R-S. Sexually transmitted infection status turn-ons, avoids, relationship intentions, and safer sex etiquette. It doesn't have to be done in that order, but stars sounds a lot better than rats. <laughs> Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that may be. Let's talk about sex. Let's talk about sex for now. It keeps coming up anyhow. Let's tell it like it is and how it could be, how it was and how it should be. Sexually transmitted infections, not dis-ease. When we get an STI, it reaffirms that sex is dirty. But we don't think about getting a cold or a flu that way. We live in a world surrounded by bacteria and viruses that we readily transmit to each other. But the ones we get through sex, we perceive as being especially shameful. So we don't talk about it or want to think about it until after symptoms occur. When 25% of young adults are getting an STI before the age of 25, we know our sex education is not working. When only one-third of primary care physicians are screening for STIs, we are assuming that everybody's only having sex in monogamous relationships. 
Getting tested regularly before a new partner helps reduce the transmissions of infections that are treatable or controlled by medication. Discussing your STI status to your partner lets them take responsibility for their own sexual health. Everybody talking about your STI status keeps all of us accountable and healthy. One third of people who answered my survey did not know what turned them on. Another third that did know didn't want to tell their partners. I'm not sure how we're supposed to figure out what turns our partner on. I think we're supposed to do it through mind reading or intuition or body language. But you know, body language is not always clear and misinterpretations could have negative consequences. I think of talking about what turns you on in the beginning before you actually gotten sexy is kind of like building a foundation of compatibility. And then it's like a scaffold that you help support and build your relationship upon. I know, you may think it's kind of awkward to do this, but let me tell you something. Talking about what turns you on is really sexy. <laughs> Boundaries can be like a brick wall that don't move no matter what you do. Or they could be like a line in the sand that gets washed away. We develop our boundaries through experience and maturity, and they shift with partners and situations. A lot of us don't know our boundaries until after they've been crossed, and we really want to avoid that because that is a serious buzzkill. We know through the Me Too movement that boundary crossing is a pervasive and serious problem. We need to talk to each other. Asking and listening to each other will help create a consent-based sexual culture, and this is how we create safety. Stating your intentions to another person is asking yourself the question, what does this mean to me? What do I want? And what will I need from them? It's not easy. It takes a deep level of vulnerability and self-awareness to do that, I know. We risk feeling disappointed, not getting what we want, or even being flat out rejected. So it's so much easier to project our needs and make this assumption that we both want the same thing. But we've all experienced what can happen. We can have feelings of hurt and of manipulation. Putting your agenda forward takes a lot of courage, but let me tell you how much better it feels to both be a hell yes than it is to do something you later regret. Okay, I hate to break this to you. There's no such thing as safe sex. It's like getting into a car. Every time you do it, you take a risk. So we do things to help ourselves. We wear our seat belts, we follow the laws, and we practice defensive driving. It's the same thing with sex. We must take responsibility for ourselves. Using condoms helps reduce STIs, but not 100%. Contraception helps reduce undesired pregnancy, but not 100%. Discussing with your partner what you need to protect yourself, each other, and what you would do if it fails early on helps reduce hurt that can happen way later. Having a safer sex etiquette helps you actually enjoy what brings you pleasure without guilt. Stars acts to de-shame sex by eliminating the risks of having sex. It's a tool that says, this is who I am and this is what I want with you. It's about claiming our needs for safer sex physically, emotionally, and spiritually. 
We live in a world of silence and assumptions. Every day we hear of people that are being hurt by sexual harassment, assault, and worse. We need a sexual paradigm shift. I know, it will feel weird to put the card before the horse, but let me tell you, every single relationship I've ever started with this conversation has been so much healthier. Imagine a world where college students would be doing their stars talk before every fraternity party. How? Oh. A world where stating our intentions, desires, and boundaries was a normal part of courtship. Where we loved and honored our sexuality enough to have an authentic conversation with another human being. When we reach for the stars, we prioritize speaking and listening to our truths, respecting our sexual health, and creating a sex-positive world. Thank you.